there we're going to take a look at vibration modes um, and standing waves. So basically what a standing wave is, is it's a wave that gets trapped, or at least pieces of waves that get trapped within a confined space. So as an example, we could think of this first example here, this first harmonic, and we'll define what a harmonic is in just a moment. This first harmonic, we could look at this as a guitar string. A guitar string is attached at both ends of an instrument, one on the, the neck of the guitar, one at the body of the guitar, and when plucked, it vibrates at a, a frequency. Um, it vibrates at a, a its first natural frequency, which is what the first harmonic is. Um, and what happens when that guitar string is, is played is a wave will travel from one end down to the other end of the string. And now normally a wave would continue to move on. Right? We've got a crest, we've got a trough, which makes this a full wave, but instead this wave can't go past where the guitar string is attached to the body, so it turns around and travels back towards where the where the sound came from or where the vibrations came from and this will happen over and over again and the wave will interfere with itself the incident portion will interfere with the reflected portion and it will give us this standing wave pattern standing wave pattern because it appears to stand still all right so now i'd like to take a look at how we can actually put a formula to this um, so let's say we knew the length of this guitar string, we could measure it, length could be denoted by an L, and we could see how many wavelengths are trapped within this boundary. So if I wanted to figure out the, the overall wavelength, I could say, well, L will represent the length of the string. We've got the knowledge that this is only half of a wavelength that fits on that string. So we could say, well, the length equals one half of a full wavelength. So that's where I'm getting this formula from. There's literally one half of a wavelength that is equal to the length of this string. And then from there I could figure out all sorts of cool stuff. You know, I could figure out what the the frequency is of this wave. You know, if I plugged it back into our V equals lambda F equation. Right? Now I know the the wavelength I know the speed of speed of sound that travels across this string. We could we could look it up. We could be given it in within open air. Speed of sound is around 340-ish meters per second. That does change with environment. But then I could know my velocity, and then I could figure out what frequency this actually vibrates at, which would then correspond to an actual musical note. We don't have to get there quite yet. I just want to at least show you that there are additional things that we could we could go from here. So in order to figure out a second, harmo a second harmonic, we would be able to say, well, how many wavelengths are there within this length? Um, throwing that into a, a mathematical formula, we could say, well, from here to here is a length of string that the wave is traveling down. How many waves fit across that length of string? Well, there's one half here, a second half here. So this would be one half in the second half of a full wave. Um, so there's one full wavelength that fits on this string. So whatever the length of the string is, is also the length of the wave. And how we get a second harmonic is by essentially cramming more wavelengths into the same amount of space. Or we could think of it as allowing for the, the string to vibrate at double the rate that it did in a first order harmonic. Um, Notice, we'll notice something about this formula. There's a couple of different ways we could write it. Uh, this is a more conceptual way, right, because the length is literally equal to two of those halves. So if this was, again, the length of the string, there'd be one, two halves there. But of course, mathematically, it doesn't really make sense to say two halves. We absolutely could, but it's easier to just say, well, two halves, that's one. Uh, or we could go even easier and say rather than length equals one times the wavelength, well, one times anything is itself, even if it's a variable. So the length of the string is equal to the wavelength of this of this wave. All right. To get a third order harmonic, same deal. We just continue to move on. We'll notice that there's no node, or there's I guess I shouldn't say no nodes. There's two nodes here. There is one node in the center here, a total of three nodes, and there's one, two, three, four nodes here. Two of them are in the center. So we just continue to add 
more and more nodes as we get more and more harmonics. So we could go with a fourth, a fifth, a sixth harmonic. We could go on ad infinitum. But um, we, we are only going to go up through the third order harmonic. All right, so in order to figure out the wavelength of a vibration that is occurring in a third order harmonic, we'd be able to say, well, there's one half of a wavelength there, another half here, and then yet another half over here. So the length of this string allows for th one, two, three half wavelengths to fit on it. Um, or L equals three over two, three halves. And we could write this as a decimal as well, um, but usually I just leave it as a, a fraction. There's not one way that's more right than another way necessarily though. All right, so that is uh, wave wavelengths and vibrations on a guitar string or in closed-ended tubes. So in open-ended tubes or open-ended air columns, this is more representative of something like a um, a flute, which would be open at open at both ends. So we'll notice that the wave the waveform appears a little bit different rather than starting on a node we actually start on an anti-node of a wave and the node will happen in the in the middle the reason that these anti-nodes are at the end is because if we think of um, a, a flute being open at both ends we're allowing for air molecules to vibrate at those open ends whereas a guitar string which we just did above is not able to vibrate back and forth at the ends because it's literally trapped to the instrument it's stuck on the instrument or screwed onto the instrument so with flutes, they can vibrate at, at both ends. Um, organs, in a way, are, are similar to open-ended air columns as well. So what ends up happening is we'll see that there's an anti-node at both ends. Well, how can we have an anti-node at one end and the other end? We must have had to have crossed through a node at some point, being right here. So in order to figure out the wavelength for, for this diagram, we'd have to know again the length of the tube and how many wavelengths actually fit inside of it. Well, if we think of a full wave, full wave would look like this. We could break that up into multiple pieces. So right here is only a quarter of a wavelength. How, how we know that it's a quarter of a wavelength is because if we were to look at this diagram we could say well this is a full wavelength, this would be a half wavelength, this would be a quarter wavelength or a wave split up into quarters. So basically what we have going on here is we've got we start on a node we're basically starting here and we're going through in a node sorry I think I said it started on node. we're starting on an anti node my mistake and then we're going through a node and we're coming back down to another anti node there. So what we have drawn here, the red portion, or the red wave, is identical to what we have drawn up here. So there's a total of one half wavelength in here, because we have a quarter wavelength here, right? one quarter of a wavelength, and we have another quarter of a wavelength there. And of course, a quarter plus a quarter equals a half. I'll get my chicken scratch drawing out of the way here so it's not distracting the rest of the way here. So in order to figure out the, the length of this wavelength, we could say, well, the length is equal to 1, 2 quarters. Length is equal to 2 quarters of a wavelength. Um, or we could say it's equal to 1 half of a wavelength, which probably makes a little more sense than saying 2 quarters. I personally like to actually leave it as 2 quarters because I, I feel like uh, the concept matches the math a lot better that way, since there are literally 2 quarters of a wave here. For a second order harmonic, it operates very much. Um, Open-ended air columns operate very much similar to uh, closed-ended air columns in the fact that we're just adding nodes every single time we're going from one to two to three to four to however many harmonics we're dealing with, we just continue to add nodes. There is one node here, now there's one, two nodes here. How can we have two nodes? Well, we must have started on an anti-node because again, open-ended air columns always start and end on anti-nodes. We must have had to pass through a node, had another anti-node in the middle, before we could get to another node again. So if we count up how many wavelengths there are here, there's a quarter right there, plus another quarter, another quarter, another quarter, which gives us a total of four quarters of a wavelength, which of course would be the same as saying one wavelength, or just the length of this tube is equal to one full wavelength. 
Now, in a third order harmonic for open-ended air columns such as, a, such as a flute, we just, again, continue to add more nodes. There was one node here, two here, now there's one, two, three nodes there. And the reasoning is very similar to the first and second order harmonics, where how do we get from an anti-node to another anti-node with three nodes in between? Well, we've got to have more quarters of a wave thrown into the diagram. So if we take a look at this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six quarters of a wavelength. So the length of this tube is able to fit six quarters of a wavelength within it. Better way of saying that would be three quarters of a wavelength. Three, sorry, halves of a wavelength. All right, so let's take a look at closed-ended air columns then. Closed-ended air columns would be like a uh, clarinet, as an example, where the player's mouth would be at one end, essentially trapping trapping air from moving there, and the other end of the instrument would be open, allowing for an anti-node to take place because air molecules are able to vibrate freely. So, in a closed-ended air column, the math's a little bit different here. Uh, conceptually, still still the same. We're just adding nodes every time we go from a first to a to a third to a fifth harmonic. But we'll notice there is no second harmonic. There is no fourth harmonic, and it's not just because that's the, what we chose to pick. It's literally physically impossible to have a second or a fourth order harmonic. Maybe stop and pause the, for a second and see if you can figure out why that why that is. So I'll go through it go through it now but if you do figure it out on your own you're in really good shape so in a first order harmonic for a, a tube that is closed at one end and open at the other end well the close the closed end is not going to allow for air to vibrate back and forth so we start on a node the open end is going to allow for air to vibrate freely so in a first order harmonic we would have one node on one side an anti-node on the other in order for that to happen, though, we can only have a quarter of a wavelength fit inside of this tube. And here's the reason why. Again, if we if we took a look at what a full wavelength looks at looks like, it would look like this. All right. So basically, what we have here is only one quarter of a wavelength because we're essentially going from this node, so that would be representative of this on a wave, up to an anti-node, which would be up here. If I were to split this wave up, we'd see that that's only one quarter of this wave, clearly not drawn to scale. So we've got this happening right there. So what that means for our formula then is that there's only one quarter of a wavelength that is equal to the length of that tube. Or restated, we've got a length of a tube. That length fits one quarter of a wavelength inside of it. Now there is no second order harmonic because a second order harmonic would look like this. Where we'd have a node at one end, go up to an anti-node and a node at the other end. But physically we know that's not possible. If we have an open end, air is going to be able to vibrate freely. So it doesn't make sense that we would have an, a node there. So we would end up going to a third order harmonic instead because literally physically it is it is impossible for us to have a second or a fourth order harmonic or any other even even number because we have one open end one or one open end and one closed end so for a third order harmonic again we would it would be just as similar to a, a string or a closed ended air to, um, tubes or open ended air tubes air columns i guess i should say um, we just continue to add nodes so here we only had one node so for our, our third order, we're going to throw a second, a second node in there. How do we do that? Oh, we've got one half of a wavelength that happens here, and then that wave continues on. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't even know this program could do that. So we've got our other quarter of a wave here, and uh, it would normally continue on this way, but again, it ends up coming back the other other way here because these ends will allow each other to vibrate back and forth and will form an anti-node. So we end up with how many how many pieces of a wave here? We've got a quarter here, another quarter here, and another quarter there finally. So our final formula becomes um, 
L equals three quarters wavelength, because again, the knowledge is that we know there's three quarters of a wavelength that fit within the length of this tube. Or again, restated, the length of this tube will fit three quarters of a wavelength within it. And with a fifth order harmonic, again, fourth order harmonics are impossible. Um, on closed ended air columns, or at least one end closed on an air column. With fifth order harmonics, again, we just continue to add more nodes. There's one node here, two here, there will be one, two, three nodes here. Um, trace our, our waveform in there, count up how many pieces of a wave we have here. One, two, three, four, five quarters of a wave of a wavelength there. So we'd be able to say, oh, the length of this tube is able to fit within it five quarters of a wavelength. And again, it may not make sense, like why, why would we even do something like this? But in order to figure out the frequency of different instruments in, in tuning them, not as in a musician tuning them, but somebody at a, a factory actually tuning what the, what the shape of an instrument would be, uh, we, have to, we have to figure out how much of a wavelength can fit in here first so that we can then figure out later on how much, uh, what the frequency of each one of those waves would be. So that is vibration modes in a, in a nutshell or standing waves in a, in a nutshell. See you later.